Coming up next on Behind the Curtain, musical director and composer Khalil X. Daniel. You make my soul come alive. I see the sun rise when I look in your eyes. I never have to say too much. When it's rocky from turbulence, you make every day a brighter day. You descended in from outer space. We leveled up on synergy. When you're lying next to me, I got you lying. Welcome to the Classical Theater of Harlem's Behind the Scene. In this segment, I am delighted to bring Khalil Daniel uh, to, uh, to the viewers. Khalil is an actor, a singer, a writer, a producer, a music director, um, originally from Teaneck, New Jersey, and is a proud Howard University graduate. Hey, it's you. Uh, we've had the great, great pleasure to collaborate on no a number of occasions. And so it's a great honor that I get a chance to sit down with my friend, my brother, my great collaborator, Khalil Daniel. How you doing, brother? Brother Carl, I'm doing good. Glad to be here. Glad to be Man, here. Thanks I am glad you were here. I am glad you were here in uh, these tumultuous times. Um, this means a lot to me. So thank you, brother. No problem. Same thing. You know what? I'm going to jump right in. Talk to me about your trajectory. How did you get to be the man that you are now as far as music? Uh, music? Um, well, um, I was born, when I was born, both of my parents were already um, music executives. They were um, urban, they were um, marketing and promotion executives in the urban music department of major labels. And so music has always been coming through my house since I was a, a child, a kid. Songs would be on the radio. We would get the songs here before they'd be on the radio. And by the time they get on the radio, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's a good song. You should listen to it. <laughs> um, but that's how. And it was kind of, I think, I always say that music was my first relationship. You know, like that first personal thing that you have with something other than yourself where you can just go and, and lose yourself or collect your thoughts. That's what music always did for me. And so that's where it started. And ever since then, um, I've always pursued it. I started, I've been singing uh, I, I, forever, my life, my whole life. I started writing songs around 16. Uh, I recorded my first EP when I, as soon as I got out of college and I've just been performing since. And yeah, that's my music story so far. That's a great story. Talk me through how you came to CTH. So um, just as much as I'm an actor, I'm also a singer. I mean, just as much as I'm a singer, I'm also an actor. And it was audition season in 2018, summertime. And I remember seeing the, I had my equity card. Um, and I remember seeing the, the, um, the post in backstage, which I used to check all the time. As soon as we get back to work, I'll be able to do it again. Um, but I used to check that all the time. And I saw this audition for the classical theater of Harlem. And um, there was nothing that I wasn't going to audition for. As long as I fit the, the profile, what people were asked, what they were asking for, fit the age, um, I fit the description, I was gonna go audition for it. And that day was a, it was a divine day. I walked in and um, I got the chance to, chance to audition for you and Ty, uh, producing artistic, artistic director Ty Jones. And the beautiful thing about that audition was that usually people send casting directors to do their auditions, but you were the director of Antigone, Ty was the producer of Antigone, and you guys were in the room. And um, specifically as a black man to see, to get to audition for two other brothers, that was a treat. And it was, um, I, think we, I think we just had a great session. I auditioned for you guys, and I think my resume had said something about, um, and my resume said that I was a music director because I do that at church. 
And then you guys inquired about, do, am I, do I write songs? Is, is this something, uh, uh, you're a music director that caught you guys? And I said, yeah. And then you thought that that was something that we could use. And I was just grateful. You asked, you told me what you would need. And I thought that I was just going for an acting audition. And lo and behold, I walked out a music director. And it was, it was that was a blessing. Yeah, it was divine. It, it, yeah. it was truly divine. It was truly meant to be. As a matter of fact, you were on your way out of the room. Yeah. And I was like, hold on one second, brother. Down here, I see music director. Yeah. Talk to me about that. And lo um, and behold. That, yeah. So um, I've been the music director at my home church um, that I grew up at for since about 2015. I was raised in that choir. Um, our former music minister of music, she's the one, I call her like my music mom. She's the one who, uh, um, I think great sing, great actors come from Shakespeare. You start with Shakespeare. Dancers, you start with ballet. I think the best singers come from church, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. And I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, because they, they can do so many styles. They can go from gospel to R&B to classical to opera. And um, I think... Uh, so I, I put that on my resume and then you saw it <laughs> and that's how that happened but um yeah I, I went from being a church music director to now a, a a theater music director just by you guys looking at that incredible so let me ask you this so you saw that we were doing Antigone a yeah. Greek tragedy yeah and when I and and when we started talking about uh, the musical landscape that I envisioned for that. Talk to me about that. Was there any anxiety? Because I want to be clear to, to the viewers out there, Khalil took this archaic language and crafted these incredibly beautiful, moving, relevant, and resonant songs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just talk to me about, like, you know, you're like, brother, you want me to do what? Like, yeah. What what did that that feel like? Well, I remember you guys you guys had said that um, you said so you're a music director and I said yeah you said you looked you can tie you looked at each other and it's like so can you do you think you could create some songs for this <laughs> and I said yeah because um, before I became a music director like you know I, I was I've been singing been started writing songs and um, the thing about being the music director at church is that it's just a crash course in three part harmony. Um, as soon as you join a choir, you they place you a soprano, alto, tenor, soprano one, soprano two, alto one, alto two, so on and so forth. And um, by that point, to teach the soprano, alto, tenor parts. And so once you get good at that, three-part harmony is just kind of, it's, it's simple. And so um, also being an actor, I know that the chorus is a huge part of, um, of Greek plays. And if, if the chorus, I think that I'm not sure if, if I knew there or if we talked about it there, but I think you guys mentioned that they, you want, you were going to have three chorus members. And so I knew that coming up, I love to write songs. And I, I didn't know what I was going to write, but if you <laughs> give me a chance, I'm going to do it. And um, so I just knew it was a chance to write three part harmony, um, probably in a way that I hadn't done before. And I'm always up for a challenge to step out of my comfort zone and do something I'm not familiar with. So it, it just, it, it, seemed, it was perfect. And you uh, met the challenge, exceeded the challenge, and Thank really you. did something that I think is pretty special. Can we hear a little something, uh, like for the, for the people who might not have gotten a chance to see Antigone, can you give us a sampling of what our Greek chorus sounded like? This is, um, this is called Last Plea. This was... I'll do some of Last Plea, which was um, Ryan Alvarado's song. He was one of the original members of the chorus. And he, this song happens just as all the tragedy. I think if, if, if you wanted, we really, the thing about Antigone was that we likened it to um, the Black Lives Matter world that was happening in, that was started in 2012 through 2016. That was two years after Mike Brown and everything was, it's still fresh. And so if you can imagine, it's kind of imagine that we're in, in, in the world of Antigone, we are where we are right now, where everything is just chaotic and you're just looking for some, some guidance and they reach out to God and they make their last plea. Oh. 
my honor I be that owns my body so dishonored tis honor to deprive this Shall my fame be bred? For in my death I murder shameful scorn. My shame so dead, my honor is newborn. My blood shall wash the slender of mine ill. My life foul deed, my life's fair Faint not faint heart, but stoutly say, so be it. Oh, God up, 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 can you hear us, hear us? Oh, oh to my end. Uh, yeah, that's beautiful, ma'am. That's beautiful. Okay. And um, so this is like our classical theater of Harlem. Um, small desk concerts. No, so, wow. No, no, so we get a real insight into, you know, where the genesis for these ideas came from and how they spoke to you and then how we ultimately got them to the stage. So, mm. so it's beautiful, man. Um, God bless. Thank you. Um, and you alluded to it, but I just want to pick back up on it. It's amazing that the show that we did mm -hmm. was as resonant as it was then but I think ultimately right this second could yeah. still be what Isn't we're that nuts? About. Isn't that nuts? Um, I mean, that's just the power of theater and attaching it to cultural, um, to things that are going on culturally. Once you do that, a piece can live forever. And the, the way that we, the way that you approached it as a director, I really appreciate it. I really appreciated you as a director. And I tell you this all the time. I think that you're an actor's director. And so you really are, you're in there with us during the process. You let us find our way and, um, and let us have a part in crafting the story. And I think that when you approach the work like that, you're able to get a really strong understanding of your purpose, of what you're doing this for. And the fact that we attach that to Antigone, we could play, pull that play out now and do it, and it would still be so relevant um, as long as this is still going on. Man, I appreciate you saying that. And I, I, I agree 110%. Um, the work um, that we all found in that, I, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, I'm going to pivot slightly. I'm going to pivot slightly to our next collaboration. Yeah. So we said, now, for something completely different, right, we're yeah. going to do a Christmas carol in Harlem. Yeah. Completely different musical vocabulary right completely mm -hmm. different um you know ideas surrounding the sonic sound of the, the of the show talk mm -hmm. to me about that um uh similarly to uh, so we were in rehearsal for antigone i was grateful to be there and i think we were wrapping up and and, and ty said you know we have another show coming up would you be interested in doing the music for that <laughs> Yes, I am. All these, I, I'm a, I love to create, to write and produce. So these opportunities to combine my music with the love of theater was, it was, it, I'm, it's still divine. It's still awesome. And um, getting to approach, when, as soon as I heard the title, A Christmas Carol in Harlem, I feel like I immediately knew what to do with that um, um, musically. When I think of that, I think of, okay, something classic, but we're going to add some soul to it. Um, and immediately what came to mind was the Wiz. Um, um, don't lose the feeling that we had from the Wiz and Donny Hathaway's This Christmas. And that, that was just the feeling that came. And I said, we, we got to make the music sound and feel in that ballpark. And so um, that summer, CTH, they, um, they sent, you guys sent 
myself and Sean Renee Graham, uh, the, 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 the adapted, the, do we call her the, the playwright for Antigone? The playwright. She adapt, the playwright for Antigone and the playwright for, um, she adapted the script for Christmas no. Carol in Harlem. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about uh, Christmas Carol in Harlem. So yeah, she one of the adapters of that Antigone and mm -hmm. she um, wrote the play for Christmas Carol in Harlem. My fault. Right, yeah. No, no, yeah. And um, I got to go up there with her and she, while she was creating and while I was making the music and we had a dramaturg with us and that process was so amazing just to, she went away in a corner and wrote and then they, it was this artist space, it's called Space at Ryder Farm. It was really cool. And then I went into like a barn that they, they, they make these spaces that are usually on a farm and they tear them down and renovate them and make them specifically artist spaces. So I went into a barn that was probably used to hold horses where there was a piano and in the middle of the summertime, I just sat down at the piano and started coming up with Christmas tunes. And um, the theme song, um, Keep Christmas, was the first thing that came. And then everything else just kind of came from there. Perfect segue. Yeah. So I'm going to put you into the barn right now. Okay. And let's hear how you approach that. I must say, one of my great joys as a director, as a person who works in theater, is when I can walk into a theater and see an audience so swept up by what they've just seen. And I must say, every time in Christmas Carol in Harlem, when we played that song, it was just so infectious. Praise God. And on a personal note, just seeing a room, a theater of brown and black children just in rapture. <laughs> Doesn't it, doesn't it do something to you? It's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. And so, so brother, I thank you for blessing us and blessing the Harlem community uh, with that because it was such a love letter to the Harlem community and to see these children, yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say a Christmas Carol, uh, unlike any they had ever seen, any they had ever read, and to hear that musical uh, soundscape it was, it was beautiful. And it's beautiful to hear, you know, because um, it, 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 for, I'm gonna be a fan for a minute, it's a tip of the cap to Donny Hathaway, right? Because Donny Hathaway's This Christmas is what that is, right? Yeah. But hearing yours, brother, I must say, it's just, it's wonderful. Thank you. That means, thank you, Carl. Uh, that, that means a lot. If I, if I can, just really quickly, the, um, that was a, a huge part of what made me so grateful about being able to write this music is um, I usually write songs for myself, but this was a chance to write songs and put them on other people. And I feel like I got that same, that's, that's like a songwriter's greatest like joy when you can write a song and it comes off like you wanted it to and people, it, 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 it gives people the same feeling that it gave you and to see the cast be able to see them take it um, year after year and, and look forward to singing it and make it their own. And it, then it becomes something that we all do together and we let that spirit come out. Um, and the show happens right at the end of the year. It's a great, it's just a great way to end the year and go into the next year. Um, really grateful for that. Well, brother, I, I don't think there's, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that you coming out of the church and to be quite honest, there's a ritual to church. Mm. 
with this, the music and the community together mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. receiving this message. Mm -hmm. I like to think that there's a very similar experience when we're in a theater watching something like A Christmas Carol in Harlem and everybody can come in like Scrooge mm -hmm. and feel uh, rejuvenated mm -hmm. and leave the theater with that um, tremendously catchy song, just lifting their spirits on out. So um, oh, amen. It's, it's been a joy to collaborate with you, my friend. Thank you for granting us this access to you and to your process and to see how you get down. And uh, what, else, what else do you wanna uh, uh, share with us? Um, I just, just follow me on the gram and on the Facebook. Um, I'm an independent artist. These are crazy times we're living. It's, a hard, it's, it's not a great time to tour with music, but it is a great time to release music. Yeah. So I've um, been working on my next album and there's some stuff coming. So just follow me on the gram, Khalil X Daniel. You got it. Brother, much appreciated. And um, we'll see you on the other side of this. Stay safe. You too. God bless you, Carl. Peace. Hello, this is Andre Brower. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of attending several productions produced by the Classical Theater of Harlem. The magic of theater has always been its power to change the way we look at ourselves and connect to the world around us. I and my family are so inspired by the Classical Theater of Harlem's mission that I've proudly become a trustee of the organization. Classical Theater of Harlem's work in Upper Manhattan utilizes public and private spaces to bring culture, commerce, and vibrancy to the uptown community. Their approach to telling these complex, rich stories enables us to recognize that our similarities are far more compelling than our differences. We value the impact it has on the community and I'm committed to see it thrive and expand in the years to come. In celebration of CTH's 20th anniversary, we humbly ask to be part of your giving plans this season. We are launching our $20 for 2020 campaign, where we are asking supporters to make a recurring donation of $20 per month for the upcoming 2020 season. Your contribution supports emerging artists, empowers young designers, choreographers, and administrators, and ultimately, your contribution enables excellence. Please, join me in celebrating the work of the Classical Theater of Harlem. 